hi guys welcome back to my channel once again this is bad talk with ola and i'm so thrilled to be here once again so someone has been asking me questions about customary marriage dissolution of customary marriage after they watched the video on divorce that's a dissolution of uh, statutory marriages and i promised that i was going to make this video for them so today we're going to be talking about dissolution of customary marriage i was supposed to talk about section 84 of the evidence act as my next video but i really need to do this video quick so that we can move on to other things and because i sense that uh it might be urgent for them to actually uh have this video like i promised so let's talk about dissolution of customary marriages in Nigeria today. A customary marriage is a marriage that is conducted under native law and custom. Under native law and custom. What, are, what is a native law and custom? Native law and custom refers to our, our own people's laws, traditions, you know, and uh, conventions, the things that we do, our generally accepted, you know, norms and uh, way of behavior, you know, uh, a manner of behavior as a people it is usually largely unwritten then it is a mirror of uh, accepted usage and then of course it is uh, it is uh, peculiar to us as a people so you would find that when we talk about native law and customs there are different sets of native laws and customs across nigeria you would have the yoruba native law and custom i'm a yoruba person so i'd mention that then you'd have probably the Tiv native law and custom the Efik native law and custom you know the Igbo native law and custom the uh, fulani native law and custom Alsa native law and custom and so on and so forth so the set of rules and guiding principles that we have that we can call our own law not the imported ones or the ones that were transmitted to us by colonization and you know uh modernization and westernization that is what we refer to as native land custom so the way that we get married the principles and the rules guiding marriage you know under in this uh aspect uh are what we call the native laws and customs of customary marriage and uh, customary marriage is uh, contracted according to these rules and principles so in nigeria uh, there are two types of uh, uh, customary marriage you have the customary marriage according to a people's native law and custom and the islamic marriage which is also classified as customary marriage so if someone is an adherent of islam they can adopt islamic uh, tradition or islamic law as their personal law now after they have adopted islamic law as their personal law they would be married under uh, islamic law so that's a type of customary marriage and then our own uh tribal you know native law and customs so those are the two types of customary marriages either islamic marriage or customary marriage but both of them are customary marriage you know so today we want to talk about how to dissolve customary marriage if it's islamic marriage it has to be dissolved according to the uh, uh, dictate if it's islamic marriage it has to be dissolved according to the dictates of uh, islam or islamic law now the law is that if a man wants to put away his wife he has to tell her the word divorce three times i will not go into specifics because that's not the focus of this video but if you're an adherent of islam or you want to know more about marriage under the islamic law you should uh, do well to do some further research so i just need you to know that it is also a type of customary marriage in nigeria now let's talk about the native law and custom and i'm going to be using the yoruba native law and custom as uh, uh, an example but you should know that most of the things i'll say in this video applies to all sets of native laws and customs in nigeria the uh, the differences will be minimal and that will be peculiar to each uh, custom and each uh, tribe but uh, i'll be talking about general applications here usually under native law and custom marriage is different from uh, the way it has been defined in uh, the uh, matrimonial causes act or mat or marriage act or uh, the dictates of uh, you know common law as can be found in Ida and Ida and Woodman Sea where marriage is uh, the union of a man and a woman uh, for life to the exclusion of all others under customary law 
marriage is the union of a man and a woman until the death of the woman you know that would mean that uh, if a man dies the woman is still married to him customarily is still married to his family and so you know there are some customs uh, traditions that have uh, you know succession in a way that uh, a brother or a male member of the man's family can take over or can uh, inherit the wife of the deceased man so it is until the death of the woman that the marriage determines you know and it is not to the exclusion of all others as an either night and woodman say rather in customary law polygamy is the order of the day so a man can marry as many wives as possible conversely however a woman is not allowed to marry as many husbands as possible because we have in nigeria uh, a patrilineal you know society mostly the nigerian society is mostly patrilineal that means that uh we trace our genealogy by the man and so in most instances it is the man that can marry more wives or as many wives as possible but not the woman now if you were talking about islamic law which is also a type of customary law the man is limited to four wives but for uh nigerian native law and customs the different sets of native laws and customs a man can marry as many wives as possible but the same is not for the woman now you need to also know that when we talk about marriage in the customary sense we are talking about the union of families not uh, necessarily the union of the man and the wife i remember that when we took i took a course on family and kinship and uh, we were talking about how really the man and the woman in the customary sense are mere representatives of the family so it is like a union of families the man and the woman are just representatives so things do not end with them just like things do not start with them and things do not progress even in the marriage with just the two of them the family the entire family is carried along i know that there are some of these things that have been done away with because of civilization and progress some good some well debatable but that is how it is now when a party is desirous of uh, putting an end to a customary marriage they can do it in two ways either judicially or extrajudicially now judicially they can go to court to a customary court or a um, magistrate court i believe that i've done a customary divorce at the magistrate court before in fact that was very early in my uh, um, practice as a lawyer and it was a very interesting case i've written and spoken about it uh, on several platforms formally and informally but it was a very interesting experience for me now that's judicially you go to court just like you're going to court to uh, apply uh, for dissolution of marriage but now it's a customary marriage so you can go to a customary court or you can go to a magistrate court if uh, such is uh, allowed or obtainable in your jurisdiction or you can do it extrajudicially by simply returning the bride price or diary and uh, other things that were paid you know during the marriage now again the patrilineal aspect of our culture comes up because in most cases it is the man that puts away the wife hardly do you see a woman in a customary marriage putting away her husband and even when she tries to she is hardly successful except it is a case of maybe extreme cruelty or maybe the man has done something that even the family cannot overlook when the woman is at fault in most instances families are trying to settle to make peace and getting her to uh, beg the husband go back to the husband these things are debatable but that's not the purpose of this video but usually what i'm saying is that a man is the one that usually puts away his wife and he can do that extrajudicially by demanding for bride price to be returned to him so the family the wife's family will return the bride price and uh, or the dowry or whatever was paid by the man to the wife's family during uh, the contracting of the marriage now if it's the wife's family try uh, trying now if it is that the wife's family is the one trying to also end the marriage they can do same return the bride price the bride uh, uh, the dowry or the uh, things uh, that were paid or they were bought or purchased and given 
to the wife's family during the marriage, they can return it. In fact, in some cultures, even after the death of uh, the wife, the dowry or the bride price needs to be returned to the husband's family. If the wife's family is desirous of, you know, burying their child, you know, in their side of town or their side of the clan of the village or in their own uh, hometown where they come from, else even the dead body is the property of the husband and has to be buried with the husband's, uh, uh, and has to be buried in the husband's place. Yes, I know that there are some cultures that do that. So uh, that is how to end the marriage extrajudicially. You just need to call a meeting of all the elders that were there when the wife was being given to the husband and the things that were exchanged will be returned. It's uh, a ceremonial end and it must be done for a customary marriage to be determined, you know, properly. But if you want to go to court, you can go to court apply to court and uh, sue for the dissolution of the customary marriage. Oh. There are a few developments in uh, our jurisprudence and our legal system, you know, which is now giving rise to some laws and regulations guiding uh, dissolution of customary marriages. I know there's a bylaw order that covers, you know, most of the southern or southwestern states in Nigeria, and you would find provisions as to how uh, customary marriages can be dissolved in court in these laws uh, or this law and uh, i know that the development is ongoing and you know we will soon have you know a uh, a watertight you know system just like we have with the mca and the ma that's the marriage act and the matrimonial causes act but according to the existing law and according to uh, uh what is obtainable when you apply you have to give a ground just like in a uh, dissolution of a statutory marriage, the general ground is that the marriage has broken down irretrievably. But then you have to now bring uh, reasons such as maybe uh, uh, adultery or uh, refusal to consummate the marriage and what have you. So also when you're applying for dissolution of customary marriage in court, you have to give reasons, grounds, you know, why you're coming. So a ground can be infertility or sterility. Maybe the husband is sterile or the wife is infertile. And then another ground could be uh, adultery, adultery, and you have to prove that it is impossible for you to move on as a spouse or forgive that other party who has uh, the adulterous party. And then, of course, you have to, uh, you, and of course, you can have, um, uh, you know, cruelty on either side. So if you can prove cruelty to the court the courts can grant dissolution of customary marriage. I must state at this point that where adultery is the case, usually it flies when it's adultery by the woman. Because again, you know, patriarchy, you know, uh, the man is entitled to marrying as many wives as possible under customary law. So in most cases where he's caught in adultery, he'll probably give the excuse of maybe courting the woman so that he can marry her as the second wife or third wife or whatever number of wives, or even going ahead to marrying the woman right away so the wife cannot uh, lay any claims against him in court. But usually it works against women. So if the woman is the adulterer, it's easier for the man to come for dissolution on that ground than for the woman to come. Other grounds are abandonment uh, or desertion. If uh, a spouse has deserted the other, you can come for a dissolution of customary marriage. Another is a, a refusal to maintain or lack of maintenance. You know, under customary law, the husband is uh, has a duty to maintain the wife. So if he's not doing that, if it's not caring for the wife and the children of the marriage, the wife can come for a dissolution of customary marriage. And of course, another important reason that you know both parties can always come under is irreconcilable differences. So you know that could be anything, and it could be in different dimensions. But if parties are able to successfully prove to the court that there are irreconcilable differences between them, the courts will grant a dissolution of customary marriage. Now, it's important to know that uh, in proving uh, these uh, reasons, it is proof to the satisfaction of the court. Proof to the satisfaction of the court. So if the court is persuaded, 
they will grant a dissolution. Now, if you look at the marriage, divorce, uh, custody of children, adoptive bylaws, which I mentioned earlier, that is the law that's been developed that governs most southwest states in Nigeria as far as cost dissolution of customary marriage is concerned. Uh, if you look at the section seven, it provides some grounds that must be taken into uh, some reasons that must be taken into consideration and uh, that are. Uh, valid reasons enough for the dissolution of customary marriage and they are you know betrothal of a child that is underage you know that would affect the uh, female in most uh, instances and lunacy lunacy for more than three years of a spouse venereal diseases uh, conviction of either party for a crime uh, and with a sentence or imprisonment for uh, more than five years you know and food diseases that are permanent in nature and several other considerations and of course the ones that we've mentioned earlier so if uh, these things come up before the court you know uh, by the petitioner for consideration if the court uh, is satisfied that they have a case the courts will grant the dissolution although this section has a proviso that uh, if a woman is nursing a child that is under three years of age or has three children or more or more than three children by a husband uh, she would not be granted dissolution but then again if she can prove special circumstances you know things that uh it's so possible or so uh things that uh show that it's practically impossible for the marriage to continue to subsist the courts will actually grant the dissolution so essentially you see that this law and our native laws and customs also seek to protect the sanctity of the institutes or institution of marriage so you see that it involves uh, both families and usually the first port of call is uh, trying to settle when there's a crisis or when one party begins to thirst for dissolution once uh, the family catches wind of it or the other party informs their own family each uh, party or the families begin to move for settlement. In most cases, customary marriages come to an end only when all options, all other options have been, you know, uh, exhausted. I know that uh, even in customary law, they might also explore the option of separation, you know, taking the wife to go and stay with the family for a while. And, you know, <laughs> it keeps falling back to the woman because it's a patrilineal society mostly you know but uh where all other options are failed then dissolution the comes in and it could be judicial or extrajudicial as i've uh, mentioned the most important takeaway from here is that customary marriages are valid and lawful and are at par with uh you know statutory marriages in nigeria so either you are customarily married or you are uh, married under islamic law which is also customary marriage or you are married uh under the act that statutory marriage you can also do a double decker wedding uh ceremony which is what most people do that is they do statutory and then they do customary or they do customary and then they do statutory there are rules and principles guiding that too and there are ways that you can uh do the wrong thing and be punished if found out you know by law but essentially what i'm trying to bring out from this video is that because it is also a lawful and a valid marriage it cannot be approached just anyhow and terminating it can also not just be approached anyhow it has to be you know by the laid down native laws and custom which would be extrajudicially by returning of bribe price and other you know goods and uh, payments or what have you that was made by the husband to the bride or if it's by the bride depending on which society uh, uh, you're coming from and depending on what uh, and depending on what the guiding principles you know are in that uh, society or judicially by going to courts because like I mentioned there's now a body of law that uh, uh, regulates that and you know there's more judicial development as we go by that uh, uh, aimed at that so you cannot just uh, pack and go and say that oh it's ended no it has to be formally over and once the court has made a decree of dissolution of customary marriage that marriage has ended so parties cannot come together and say they are man and wife again except they go through the process of customary marriage all over again either with each other or with other people so that is how Customary marriages are dissolved in Nigeria. There are a plethora of decided cases on this. So it's something that is very serious and the process must be followed. 
So that's how to dissolve a customary marriage in Nigeria. Whatever type of marriage you have contracted, if it comes to, you know, dissolving that marriage, you need to approach a lawyer, you know, for counsel. Or if it's customary marriage and you have no intentions of going to court, approach the elders of your family so that they can do the needful. But uh, essentially, uh, customary marriages, just like statutory marriages, can be dissolved in court too. So that's all I have for you in this video. Leave me questions on the video so that I will understand if you get it or if you have further clarifications. And I will always see you in my very next video. Toodles.